Currently, there's a bit of a gap in the middle of the full frame cinema zoom lens market. You have great budget options such as the DZO Kata Ace and fantastic high end options from Fujinon, Ingenue, Cook, and Ari. But there are only a couple of options in the middle of the market. And today, we are looking at a new entry to this level of the market. This is Canon's new CNE Zoom, the 20-50mm T2.4. This is the first of two zooms that Canon will be bringing out into their new full-frame flex zoom series, with the second one being a 45-135 to T2.4, which is an incredibly good focal range. So when paired together, you will have a range of 20 all the way through to 135mm, all at T2.4. Both lenses are available in either PL or EF, and they are interchangeable, but this is only possible via a Canon authorised service centre or authorised third party. I've seen a few people question why this isn't available in RF, and I personally think it's because of the cost of this new lens, and the market it is aimed at. People wanting to invest £20,000 into a lens would not want to limit a hefty investment into such a limited amount of camera systems that RF would allow them to mount it onto. Of course, there are benefits to designing lenses for shorter flange distances, and I do hope Canon does create some RF mount cinema lenses, but I personally think that they will need to be far more affordable than this because of the target market that RF mount has. Anyway, physically the lens is fairly well sized for a full frame cinema zoom, especially for one with a constant aperture of T2.4, but it's definitely on the larger side. Here it is next to a 19-45 Premister, an Ingenue Ultra Compact 37-102, a Light 25-75 and a Zeiss 28-80. It's maybe a touch smaller than the Premister, but much larger than some of the other options, but then again it does have a much larger maximum aperture than the rest. Both lenses feature a 114mm front diameter, which is a standard size for clamp-on matte boxes, and have consistent gear placement across both lenses. Weight-wise, the Canon sits in the middle of everything, weighing in at roughly 3.3 kilograms. The size and weight do make it more challenging in run-and-gun scenarios. You will require some kind of support system around it, like a ready rig, easy rig, or shoulder rig, to make it more usable. We shot with it with the Mini LF and a set of Sackler Video 18 S2s, and carrying this around was a serious workout. Both of these lenses featuring a T2.4 aperture is actually incredibly impressive. Most full-frame cinema zooms sit at around the T2.9 mark, apart from Sigma's incredibly short 24-35 T2.2 zoom. So the fact that Canon has managed to make these both T2.4 throughout the zoom range without the lenses being absolutely massive is a pretty great engineering feat. The lens features interfaces for both Cook iData as well as Zeiss's extended data protocol, which is great for workflows that require advanced lens metadata. They both have your standard point H gears for focus, zoom and iris, the focus ring has a rotation of roughly 300 degrees, and the mechanics across all of them feel very solid and smooth. Both lenses feature an adjustable flange back system, so you can adjust your back focus on the fly for a given camera. This would be great to make sure you adjust the back focus for your camera mount depth, which could be slightly out. We also managed to take the lens out and shoot a few example shots. Everything was shot on the Alexa Mini LF in ProRes 4K UHD. Let us know what you think of the footage down in the comments below. Right, let's get into some tests. When it comes to coverage, if you want to see exactly how the 20-50mm performs on your camera in your favourite format, well, head over to our lens coverage and camera comparison tool on our website. Link to that is in the description below. However, for these examples, we wanted to check the coverage on the Alexa Mini LF in its 4.5K 3x2 open gate mode and the V-Raptor in its 8K 17x9 mode. 
At 20mm on the LF open gate, you'll have a touch of vignetting towards the corners which gets better at T4. On the V-Raptor this is similar but I would say this is a touch worse than on the LF. Performance is honestly pretty similar as you step through the focal range, however I would say that the performance does get a little bit better towards 50mm. But there is no hard vignette at all throughout the range, only illumination fall off. When it comes to how the lens renders bokeh, it features an 11 bladed iris which we can see really forming our out of focus highlights from around T4. Throughout the range we can see defined bokeh with slight colour around the outside of it which is more pronounced towards the longer end of the lens. When it comes to shape, at 20mm we can see good shape in the middle of the frame as we stop down, however towards the corners of the frame we can see the shape changing and warping, even stop down as we pan. And honestly this is pretty much the same story as we go through the different focal ranges. So yeah, as we go through the focal range we can see the same behaviour, though I think it's a touch better towards the longer end of the lens. A lens's flare characteristic is an incredibly subjective thing, that some may like and some may not. For these examples we grab the torch and blast it down the barrel of the lens. Keeping the camera and light in the same place we can see how the flare changes as we zoom throughout the lens's focal range. For these we also shot with the Fujinon Pre-Mist at 19-45 so you can see what that looks like too. The Canon has some crazy rings present in its flare which the Pre-Mist doesn't. Let us know which you like best down in the comments below. When it comes to distortion, at 20mm we can see barrel distortion. At 24mm we can see that turn more towards pincushion distortion which is present all the way through to 50mm but I would say it gets a bit more obvious from 35mm onwards. Out of the box this copy of the 20-50mm we had to test was pretty much par focal when used with our Alexa Mini LF. And even if it isn't on your camera you can easily adjust your back focus using the adjustment on the back of the lens. If you want to learn more how to do this you can check out the video we made going over it via the description below. The lens also has a close focus of 60cm or 196 feet, which is actually pretty good. For our breathing test we pulled from close focus to infinity which not many people will be doing so breathing may look a touch worse than it actually will in a real world situation. The 20-50 performs incredibly well in regards to breathing. Starting at the wide end this is where the lens performs best with almost no breathing. However as you zoom throughout the range you can start to see more breathing. It then gets a little worse as you hit the more telly end but it still performs really well. When it comes to resolving power the 20-50 performs very well. At 20mm wide open, corner to corner sharpness is good but there is clear purple and green aberration present which gets worse as you get towards the corners of frame and is still present even when stopped down to T5.6. The corners bite up at around T4 whereas the centre looks great from T2.8. At 24mm performance is similar to 20 but it does look a touch cleaner in the centre of frame. Again the corners of frame bite up at around T4 but we still have colour aberration across the frame. At 28mm performance improves dramatically. Wide open we see much less colour aberration throughout the range, especially in the corners. Performance in the centre is excellent and is very clean at T4. The corners are softer wide open but they look very good at T5.6 with only a touch of colour aberration. At 32mm we can see a bit of pink aberration in the middle of the frame and this is greatly reduced at T4. Corners have a bit more colour aberration than at 28mm and are softer than the centre of frame. They bite up at around T4 but have colour aberration all the way to T5.6. Performance at 35mm is almost identical to 32mm. At 40mm we can see colour aberration wide open across the frame and this gets better in the centre as you stop down, but it's consistent in the corners. Resolution across the frame is good though. Wide open at 50mm we can see some colour aberrations throughout the frame, especially in the corners. It's also not the sharpest in the centre out of the focal lengths, however it does bite up at around T4 and colour aberration in the centre of frame has been cleaned up here as well. In the corners there is cyan and pink aberration throughout the t-stop range though it does get a bit sharper going from wide open to stop down. As we mentioned at the beginning the Canon does have some competition. At its price point you have the Zeiss CZ2 2880 zoom as well as the Ingenue EZ2 and above it you have the Fujinon Premister, Ari Signature zooms, Cook Varitol and Ingenue's Optimo Ultra Compact zooms which all cost considerably more than the Canon options. Its weight, size and range make it most comparable to the Premister. And I think for people looking at the Premister, this lens is definitely worth looking at. However, if you're looking at the 28-80 and the EZ2, this Canon is much larger, much heavier, and whether it's worth the extra cost will come down to whether you prefer the image that much more. Really, when looking at lenses, I would suggest booking in with us for a demo and getting your hands on them and testing them side by side so you can get a feel for what image you like the best. 
Let us know what you think of the Canon 20-50mm T2.4 in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.